Hello everyone and welcome to an update on my game. Uh, a few videos back I have talked about how I handled perspective uh, by actually taking two reference um, scales and uh, then calculating a slope and a convergence point for my perspective, etc. Uh, and this worked fine if you're staying on a single plane that does not changing topology like it does not have any slopes and anything but here's uh, what an, another scene in my game is going to look like and as you can see here my character if I move it around so it does get scaled properly and if I move it it becomes a little bit bigger and it becomes a little bit smaller but here suddenly there's like a plateau right and that's then this, this, this becomes a plane and my character is way too big and I need to be able to adjust the size of my character according to where he is and not according to some mathematical function. So I had to drop that idea and I asked around on Facebook and some people told me something completely brilliant, which is use a depth map. So what is a depth map? What does it look like? Well, here it is in Photoshop. And as you can see, you, you can kind of see the same idea, right? I have those this shape here in the front. I have this shape here and the others you don't see too well. But here, this is a little lighter. And here, this is not really completely black. But the what I do is just look up at where my character is and map that to a position on this texture and read the grayscale value of the pixel at that position. And uh, here it is in action. Let me switch the scaling system here. As you can see, I have a depth map scaler here that has a depth map, so that's a texture. I have it pixels per unit, which has to match the pixels per unit on the sprite of what my world looks like. And um, I probably could do this in, in a more autom automated way, but right now it's like this. And uh, it has a world position, that, that's the world position equivalent of the origin of the texture. So the zero, zero point of the texture is located at position zero, zero, corresponding to the world. So if, if you look here at my scene, zero, zero is the bottom left corner of this thing. This is why uh, it coincides. But if for some reason, I my perspective is at some other point, I need to specify what the world position equivalent is. And then I say the max scale. So that's going to be the scale of the character when the grayscale value is 100%. And then when the grayscale value is zero, obviously the scale will be zero. And then we have an object that we want to scale. And let's see that in action now. So now if I move Charlie around on this thing, it kind of is like the same situation. But now if I go here, she's all super small. Right now you can see that she's a little bit bumpy. Sometimes she becomes a little bit bigger and sometimes a little bit smaller. Uh, this is because this is a JPEG and there are some problems with, uh, I probably should be using a bitmap instead. And so here she's super tiny going into the mountain. I mean, it, it's, it looks a lot more realistic, right? And then she, she goes up the mountain here. Yay. And she becomes small too. And then when she goes here in this forward plateau, in this forward thing, she becomes a bit bigger. So now all I need to do yet yeah, is to figure out how to make her kind of disappear to go from this place. And then she's going to have to disappear into the abyss and then come back here super small. Um, that's still one thing I have to figure out. But I'm really happy with this solution. So let's have a quick look at the code. It's nothing very complicated. So we've already seen all the serialized fields here. There's the depth map, which is texture 2D. There's an pixels per unit, world position, the max scale, uh, the object to scale, uh, that the object we, that we are scaling. This has an interface, idepthmap scaler, which has a scale at position uh, method. So I can then unit test this if I want to. And um, what the scale at position does, it takes the position that we give it, it offsets it by the world position of the texture, multiplies by the pixels per unit, and then it reads the pixel on the texture 
gets the grayscale value, multiplies this by the maximum scale to give us the resulting scale for the character. And that's it. And then we call that in the update method. And voila. So hope you like this. Uh, I definitely found that very interesting. Uh, I had to figure some stuff out, but uh, I'm really happy I, I did. And I certainly learned some things along the way. So see you next time for another update.